Professor Antonio Damasio uh, spearheads the area of cognitive neuroscience at University of Southern California. And he looks at drives, or what are known as subconscious, they're really subconscious influencers of behavior. So emotions, desires, beliefs, right? Not motivation, because motivation is not indelible. I can show you all a hyped up YouTube video and you can get motivated for a moment in time. Drives are things that reside or essentially kind of come from the limbic area of our brain. Right? You looked at the amygdala, which houses fear and anxiety. You look at the ventral striatum. You look at the hippocampus, memory. You look at different reward processing centers of the brain. Certain things drive us uh, more so than others over the long term. One of those drives he discusses is the drive to learn. Now, nobody's ever one drive, of course. It exists across the spectrum. But I'd say the majority of you, and myself included, are drive to learn to a bit, or driven to learn, given the nature of our field. Otherwise, your butts wouldn't be in the chair. We also have to look at environment, one's physical environment. Clive did a great job talking about that, if you were here this morning, when he talked about the green turf and the blue turf. Right? Simple adjustment in behavior. Instead of telling the guys, don't spit, they change the color of the turf. That's a signal, <laughs> hey, you do not spit here. Think about how you adapt to stoplights, all these things. So people, how they, how they look at physical environment, cultural environment, perceived environment. After I wrote the book, I had a strength coach ask me, hey, really enjoyed the part about the archetypes. Can you tell me how to coach each one? And I had to make sure he understood that these things are not static over time. And we'll talk about this more in depth in a minute, but people change depending on the social situation they're in. When I'm at a conference, I'm fairly uh, extroverted. I enjoy being around people. I like interacting with all of you and seeing friends. When I'm home and when I'm done with this stuff and not coaching, I kind of go into a shell. I just like to read, kind of be left alone. So these things are not static. Social factors. Man, never more than, I mean, more than ever before are these prevalent. You look at media, social media, peers, parents, all the ways these affect our athletes. So when we're looking at the behavioral outcomes we hope to achieve, hardworking, consistent, obedient, right, locked in professional, uh, professionals that attack training day after day after day, and we look at the communication or influence tactics that we want to use, they're all based upon these things. This is why we call this periodization for people. It's no different than looking at, oh, I want to achieve a hypertrophic adaptation. Which things do I need to be aware of in a basic needs analysis? What things affect human behavior?